You're going to love this one. We've got two lovely girls. Uh, they're on the channel. They're brilliant. You might have seen them uh, on the TV as well. They've got a lovely, lovely book out uh, that's gorgeous. Uh, I want to introduce you to the Kiappa Sisters. Come on! Hi, girls. Woo! <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hello. So, uh, just to tell these lovely people, you are Italian. Yes, we are. We are. Well, a bit of a twist in that. Yeah. And you're Welsh. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you're a nice little hybrid. We are. We were born in Wales, but in an Italian clan, so only speaking Italian. And it little is Italy in Wales is what we call it. Can you imagine how lovely it is in the valleys? In the, the valleys. valleys. Any and, Welsh and people out there? Oh. Oi, yeah. well done. All three of them. Okay, so let's talk about what are you going to do? Tell us. We are going to be making a very special recipe for us at Christmas time. Um, Christmas time in the Kiapa household, Mum calls us all home for a weekend, about two weeks out before Christmas, to make tortelli and ravioli. Mm -hmm. And in our family, we're Every talking year. grandparents, Every children, kids, production line. <laughs> and we make about a thousand. In a day, probably. In a day. Oh, really? I yes. remember one wow. Christmas we actually had a power cut and we even <laughs> carried on and we were cooking tortelli by candlelight. So it's like back to the ages. So you get it done no matter what. We yeah. do, we do. And it's a tradition for us and it's a time to... Food for us is about good, good food, but family. And, and we using Welsh ingredients, which are often, incredible. Yeah. So this one, it's, it's one that's brilliant this time of year. My favourite. They are butternut squash ravioli that we're going to be making. We had them at my wedding and perfect for the autumn. The lovely well, it's squash, squash time right now, isn't it? So we're going to start by doing the filling. Re our recipes are really difficult, guys. We, we're, not, we're not believers in doing something that's going to take you days, even though that's what our nonna used to do. We're working girls, so we've kind of tweaked all the recipes to make sure we can still do them but fit them in our busy lives. So we're going to bang into this food pro processor about 750 grams of butternut squash. Yep. Um, this has been ready roasted with the skin on. A lot of people think you've got to take yeah, no, the skin the off. Yeah, no, the skin's gold. And, and do, do you know what's nice? Because if you've got this leftover from roast dinners, yep. you know, wedge it up, roast it off, gorgeous. But do you know what I do every Sunday now? I just put a whole butternut squash in the oven and I get a little bit of batch cooking going and I just bake mm. it like yeah, a jacket yeah, yeah. potato until it's soft put it in the fridge, yeah. and then two, three days later, there's I, something that I'll make out of that whole baked squash. My one-year-old will literally eat, I cut it like um, little cr uh, chips, and she literally just eat the butternut squash. Mm. It's brilliant. So into that, we're going to put a bit of sweetness. Now, this is, this is not traditional British no. sensibility. Explain what is happening in your hand so right now. So we've got amaretti biscuits in here. Which, we actually have a YouTube video of how to make your own amaretti there biscuits. There we go. Mm. Jamie, do you want to unwrap these for me? I'm happy to unwrap I'll anything. Whack them in there. And then the third special ingredient. Don't get confused by this, OK? It's called mostarda. I don't know if any of you have ever tried this. People have bought this thinking it's candied fruit. Yeah. If you want to try and make it at home, it's made with mustard oil, which also is on the blacklist for terrorists at the moment because you can make bombs out of it. <laughs> well, I'll Serious. tell you a story. My granddad tried to do it, and he got his sister from Italy to what? send him over. over this sin up here, <laughs> which does have skull and crossbones on it. And you need the tiniest amount, because this is fruit, but it's um, been coated in this really strong mustard uh, mostarda, and um, he put he put a squirt too much, and it totally blew dad my dad. Dad eat it. So, so, so <laughs> ex explain to our brothers and sisters in the audience the concept of it. It's kind of sweet and sour, and blooming hot, but really hot. So it's like a mustard fruit, and it sounds probably a lot of you are thinking mustard and fruit. My dad will eat this with meat. Cheese, just, he will actually crackers, just eat it like on its own. Pie, stuff yeah. like that. You can chop it up. You can, I mean, you can do it. You can glaze meats at the last Absolutely. minute with it. You can put it a little bit into dressings. But don't think it's fruit. <laughs> that's what you don't want to do, because it's not. So we're going to put... Gonna and put it does come in different fruits. So that's yeah. a lovely yeah. peach. I mean, just get a close-up of that, Tony. I know you like a peach. There you go. I mean, look at that. If I dared you to eat the whole thing, Jamie, would you do it? As in the whole peach, that no peach. Way. No way. <laughs> no, I'll be on the toilet all tomorrow and I've got too many kids for that. I've got work to do. 
Oh, one fun. day, one day, no, maybe. It's just like, I know, I've done all those tricks. Do you know what it's I mean? I've played the game. a challenge right there. So we're going to literally blitz that now to a paste. But thanks for trying to bet. <laughs> thanks for trying to bet me in front of the audience. <laughs> and they're going, go on, Jamie, and then just destroy me tomorrow. Here we go. So emotionally, we've got sweet nuttiness from the squash, heat from the mustada. And then these little bits of sweet crunchiness from these beautiful mm -hmm. Cantucci biscuits. This is actually my favourite, and that's probably because I've got a bit of a sweet tooth. So it's that little bit, it's, it, it has got that sweet kick to it, probably more than savoury. And do you think, I mean, I know it works, yeah. and it does work. It's an amazing emotion in the mouth. But do you think the Italians, when they invented this, were drunk? Probably. Yeah. Probably. probably. Well, Italians when aren't ever drunk. Wine, food, <laughs> come on. Good? Mm. It's probably worth saying, though, if you guys can't get hold of mustarda, a bit of mustard powder it's a little will bit, probably... Just a little bit. Oh. Sorry. Like but this is the great thing about Italian cooking. We wrote, when we wrote our book, it took us two years, partly because no, my grandmother didn't write down ever one recipe. And if she did, it was like on a scrap of paper and it'd have, you know, butter, sugar and milk. And we'd be like, mm, great. Yeah. great. Guess it. Her. But a lot of it is about taste. Keep tasting as you go. If you want a bit more heat, as Jamie just did, whack a bit more in. But we're going to add to that now um, about 50 grams of parmigiano, grated. And I think that's the, the other interesting thing. You kind of use parmesan not so much as a cheese, but more of a seasoning. Yeah, don't yeah, you? yeah, that's exactly. Salt. We add the salt right at the end. In most of our soups, we'll probably add parmesan rather than salt. At the end. At the end. Off the heat. Well, whatever. Okay, Do you know what we love? When you know when you've got parmesan cheese and you've got the hard skin? Yeah. I don't know if this parmesan has it. Yeah, bit. the skin, the bit that everyone Most, throws away. Yeah, the bit everyone throws away, that's actually still parmesan cheese. Yeah, it's in just a risotto, cut these up into big chunks, put them in, they melt and they go really gooey. Cool. And it's just yes. Yeah, never Mark throw that away. It is the cheese, it's not that's skin. So I'm just, I've put in there now 25 grams of um, breadcrumbs and parmigiano. I'm going to blitz it together and then season with salt and pepper. Well, Jamie's going to season. Okay. And Mina, and do you want to talk about the flour? I'm on the pasta, and everyone always thinks pasta is really, really hard. It is simply double zero flour, which is a really, really fine flour, and eggs, and a bit of salt and pepper, and that is it. So everyone's always like, everyone always thinks it's really expensive, so we usually say, try and get the best quality ingredients you can, you, you can afford, because after all, it is just flour and eggs. So we've okay. thankfully got some pre-made pasta, but if you do want to make your own, you can check out YouTube, where we've got a whole variety of videos on yeah, how to Yeah, let's just talk about you guys and Foodtube for the moment, because, again, I mean, you do loads of lovely Italian classics, but also, because you've got a baby and you're mm -hmm. another one on the way, you are doing some brilliant stuff with baby food, which it's is my, it's so It's my cooking, useful. Jamie, it's not the baby. Yes, what? <laughs> you, you're saying, I'm, you're saying I'm, I look pregnant, do you? <laughs> <laughs> what, I no, think? I did know, <laughs> don't worry. You just scared me then. No, yeah, we do, um, I'm a... Well, we are big believers that food starts right from when you're born in a family. And I've done as quickly as I can. I've got an 18-month-old now, and she eats everything we eat. And, you know, it's all about getting your kids in the kitchen and weaning them at the right age and giving them loads of flavors and textures. So, yeah, on, um, on our channel, we've got some baby weaning recipes. And again, it's all about practical cooking. So I've done a load of um, no-cook purees. So for a mum who's really busy and hasn't got time to steam and heat, you know, one of them I think was um, baby spinach, feta and a fig blitzed together. Again, Fiamma loves it and again... Yeah. On well, it's such an amazing time because they're so open-minded and, and, yeah. and the most honest customers in the world because if yeah. they don't like it, they just spit it at you. Totally. Sort of like the one thing she spat out recently was Greek yogurt. You put it in the mouth, you swear I was giving her lemon. It was like, like everywhere in the kitchen. But there we go, good, good testers. Well, it's good though, and that's, I mean, I think, um, what I love about these guys is they have the uncles and the dads and the mums coming in, they're all arguing about the perfect way to do it, <laughs> just the way we want it. So I'm just gonna grate a little bit more Parmesan in there. So talk to us about the pasta, my darling. So as I was saying, it is double zero flour, and what we usually say is about 100 grams of flour to one egg is enough for one person, and that's a really generous big portion we've got big men in our family. We've got a six foot five dad. So he's often wanting a massive portion oh, of pastas. Not going um, and that's basically it. And you just put your flour. Uh oh, this has gone a bit, oh dear me. 
Oops. I've ruined our pasta machine. You can see we make mistakes as well. Again, we never profess to be experts. We're not chefs, we're can girls. Can I help? It's, it's a bit bigger than the one you're used to, isn't it, darling? Yeah, it's, it's industrial size. I, I, I can tell you why it's not working. It's got because one of our guests that's coming out in a minute practiced on it. And Ooh. the dough was very wet. And then it's stuck. Um, but you're all right now. Now we're good. We're back to square one. So as I said, it's 100 grams of pasta to one egg. Mm -hmm. One person, two people, 200, two eggs. Going up and up and up. In our family, I think we usually make a kilo. To simply roll your pasta out, get like a tennis-sized ball of dough. If it's a bit wet, you can just add a bit of flour to it. It's really important that you don't want to wet because then it sticks to that and you'll have what I had literally a minute ago. Your rollers on your pasta machine go from thick to thin. So rather than you standing there with a nice rolling pin for a long time doing this, earning some great, getting rid of the bingo wings, which are great, but I mean, no one has time to stand there all day doing it, do they? So I've got one of those. They're quite hard as well, aren't they? Yeah, they're really hard. But you Good start wide. Grease. Jamie's moving on. You start wide and just get thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner, and you just keep feeding your pasta through your machine until you end up with sheets. Looking a little it's bit like It's like a this. mangle, basically, isn't it? Yeah. An old-fashioned mangle. And Indeed. then all you have to do is literally spoon a teaspoon-sized amount onto your pasta sheet. Jamie's doing a really good job here. He's going completely rusty. I'm just trying to impress you. Oh, you're going bag. Oh, you can go bag. Oh. And this just makes it a bit easier and quicker. But if I'm really honest, that's what we end up doing at but home. But you know what? Uh, often I don't have a proper official bag at home, and I put it in a sandwich bag and cut yeah, the corner off. Yeah, 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 cut the corner good. off, exactly. Do you know what I also do, because I like gadgets? Um, uh, you can brush it with a brush, which is agreeable. Oh, look, she's so, okay. It's let, not mine, let, I swear, no, no, it's not No, she's upgraded my. I get one of those spritzers from the garden centre, and I just put water in it. Shh, it's the best thing for it. But she's got what um, is this? a posh That's Evian your face. version. It's well, actually really expensive. <laughs> I know, that's what the food team brought out. But we've also got, this is what my nonna used to use, a um, paintbrush, not a paintbrush, what is it called? The hardest thing about making your own ravioli is actually avoiding them opening in the water. Yes. And if they're not sealed properly, if they've got air bubbles or the pasta's gone too dry and it hasn't stuck, you're in trouble. Yeah. Has and anyone I tried making their own pasta before? That's what Hands up if you've made your own pasta oh, before. We've got a good team here. About the same amount that thought they did a good steak. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah I'd say yeah, that's like interesting. 7%. How many uh, have made successful fresh pasta at home? Because most people go like, oh, is Go it on, safe? yes! Well done, yes. round of applause for yourself, I reckon. Well done. There well we go. done. Um, and a little thing to say as well, is like this food is not for rattling out on a busy, busy midweek, no. of course. But what is beautiful, and you girls add to this, because I know that you love and live this all the time, is you make your pasta, you make your filling, and you sit down and you take an hour and a half drinking wine or cups of tea, and you just yap and talk and you do what and do what Italian girls do best you know what's that yap and talk <laughs> <laughs> complain about your husband and you did it with your kids the other day though didn't you with my pigs your little kids <laughs> oh my kids well they're kind of similar kids. I suppose but, um, you did it on a weekend yeah, yeah and I just but love it but and kids love making pasta they love God. it and they're great we my mum used to have us as literally her little minions because she could then get a thousand done in a day she sat in the audience by the way so you can where is mum She's somewhere around, oh, and she's hiding. Yeah. She's, yeah, she's I know. hiding. <laughs> but the, can I just say, even though they do take time and it is a bit of a labour of love, they. But that's the point. Yeah, it is. But some they things can't be rushed. T Twenty years ago, I started my journeys yeah, into you Italy. Do, but that way, please. And um, you know, we used to go to these wonderful chatterias up mountains. Um, food team, can I have a little bit of boiling water from the back, please? We're boiling dry. Sorry, technical. Um, we used to go to these lovely um, chatterias up the mountains. Uh, and about eight years ago in the European Union, we went to sort of a 48-hour week, and then we brought in minimum wage. And, you know, look, without debating any of those things, what happened was a, a kitchen of 10 immediately. We're not, we're not rocket scientists. It went to a kitchen of six or five. So you had the capacity in a lot of these restaurants to make pasta every day, and then there's just not the people to do it. So I went back to some of these restaurants, and the pasta was just as amazing. And the owner was talking to us, and we knew them when they were complaining. And what they did was they make pasta twice a week, and they freeze it. Uh, it's still made with love, still made with all yep. the wonderful ingredients. And just like you say, they cook it from frozen, and it's brilliant. 
Thank you very much, darling. Just a little trip. Well, this at home, this is Dad's golden food. Like, we make this, and then they go in the freezer, and no one is allowed to eat them unless it's Dad. Are they all ordered in a beautiful way? Yeah. Oh, yeah. My nonna's made special trays that slot into the freezer so Mum can, like, put bulk in on top. Gorgeous. But dare she give them to any guests. He goes nuts. If he comes home and someone's tucking into this plate of raviolis, you can see straight away. It's a bit like... Jealousy. Why have they got mine? They're like... Fair enough. Yeah. So, so your, your, squeeze, your technique here is you are squeezing out the air. Yeah. Um, and that's important because the air is almost a bigger enemy than the cut or the hole, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah. Because the it air. Wans, it expands and floats. And I've probably got a little bit of air in some, if I'm really honest. That's all right. Well, live, live, live dimming is you know, full of its own cha- challenges. But you can get cutters. Now, if you do go to Italy and you manage to find a little market and you get hold of any of these that are in brass, do recommend you buy them. Brass. They're about 15 euros. They are a million times better than the little wobbly stainless steel ones. They're 15 euros, are they? Well, five. But like five. you can also get these cutters so we could cut them into squares like that. So while you girls are going to go for your cutting execution, yeah. I don't know why I said execution, um, but um, shall I start on your sauce? You can start on the sauce. Sure. Tell me how you do yours, because I know so we're using sage. The classic Italian sauce is probably butter and sage. And all you do, it's super, super hard, again, is put a nice big knob of butter in your saucepan, brown it off, so caramelize it to a certain extent, but also put your sage leaves I- in. I'm getting all my words mixed up. It's a Friday evening. I need a glass of wine. Yes, well um, And basically, your sage leaves crisp up. They go really crunchy, a little bit like crisps. And then there's this beautiful, glossy, like caramelized butter that just goes on the top of that, and it's just perfect. And do you know what? It, what's amazing is like this herb sage. It's one of the most sort of famous herbs associated with antioxidants. It's in some of the most expensive face creams on the planet. <laughs> um, it used to be put it's in, in this water. <laughs> yes, anything expensive. But it's um, you know when you eat it fresh like this, it's disgusting. But the minute it gets crispened or, or oh. meets fat, something magical happens, and it's just beautiful. So shall I do that for you, darling? You can do that. I think, so I think you're knob, competent enough to do that. knob goes in, and we go in with the sage, um, and we get it crispy, and then we take it off the heat. Take it off the heat. So you want that butter to basically brown a little bit. Don't get scared. It won't burn. It can burn, but just as it's starting to brown, take it off, and then it's literally at perfection. And it literally, it takes about... Two hours. It's, I mean, the thing is, it's so quick, and then you, the kind of the sage goes like little Pringles. It's fragrant, perfumed. It, you can probably smell it in here as well. So I'm going to take that off the heat, unless you think different. No, I think we're good. Okay. I think just we're good. It. Mickey's um, cutting away. Yeah, there we go. There's some there to Ooh, go. We've got some holes here. We'll just try and slice those shut. And the thing is, because this sauce has got this like sweet sourness, you want to keep the sauce simple, because yeah. the, torte- the ravioli have this sweet salt in there. You want to keep the sauce simple. You can put a creamy sauce or something else, but actually butter and sage is the perfect combination. Nice. Okay. So we're getting there. So how, how many are you going to cook, girls? Are you going to do like a, how many do you do, do a portion? We usually do, because these are quite big, I would say about six. Yeah. 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 Six a portion. I mean, it depends how big your stomach is. So do you is. do it like a baker's done, dozen in your house, just in case one bursts? Yeah, we always put extra, loads of extras in. I mean, mm. it's always the case that once you start eating a portion, you want another one, and then another one, and then another Very Moorish. And it's not like gnocchi. They're not cooked when they rise to the surface. You do have to keep an eye on them. And they'll probably, because they're so fresh, they'll cook in about three minutes or less, even. Wowzers. I've got a feeling these might I, s- I see a hole. I'm not going to allow you to... Uh, I want what? to look after you. What? Something, sorry. It, there's a hole in that one. Okay. I didn't want Fine. you to. I didn't want it to burst. And also, what happens is you have this lovely cooking water, and if you're working in a restaurant and one bursts, it makes the water dirty yeah. for everything else you've got to cook. So you know, it's a frustrating. You always got to have two pans on. So shall I put it in, girls? I think so. In we go. And if we could afford slow motion, we'd have it. But we haven't. So no. we got some more. Kayla, shall I? Shall I? Shall I grab and put? Yep. Go for it. Have it a little party. Yeah. So, um, with regards, to, I mean, I know different people do different things. When you do your ravioli with this simple sauce over here, yeah. um, some people just have it as it is. Some people feed a little starchy water in and make it emulsify. Yeah. Some people put a tiny squeeze of lemon. What do you do? We would probably add a tiny bit of the, the pasta water because it is gold. Yeah. That like that starchiness, 
and then lots of parmigiano on the top and olive oil to nice. serve. I'm going to make a space for your delivery. Now, who would like... I reckon we've got two plates here. I'm going to give these two plates to two special people in the audience. Who would like to eat an amazing bowl of homemade ravioli? Stand up if you want some inside <laughs> you. I've got to find someone that looks worthy of a ravioli. Come on, I need to see the enthusiasm running through your veins. Prove to me that you want it. Do you want it? Yes or no? Okay, okay, okay. The, the, yes, he looks excited. What's your name, sir, with a white polo? Ben, come up, Ben. Over on this side, who wants one? Spider, spider. Come on, I need to spider. know more. You need to earn your crust. Earn your crust. There's a little boy over here. I'll have the little boy. That's it with a grey T-shirt. You can come up. Okay. I reckon we can get three plates out of this. Three plates. There's another plate. Who wants some? There was a man up there with a the blue shirt and the glasses. You were so fast. I've never seen anything quite like it. You must be a wonderful lover. Incredible. <laughs> Sorry. Are you, what are you doing on the 27th of November? There's a job that's got to be done, and I don't think I can do it. And frankly, I don't think I can Spider. afford it either. Spider. Um, boys, come up. Make yourself welcome. Um, we're going to go on to the roaming mic. Excuse me, KK. Um, OK, let's find out a little bit to do um, with some very virile men. Hello, how do you, what's your name? Stephen. Stephen, where do you come from? Cumbria. Lovely, how old are you? 24. Are you single? No. <laughs> I'm Ben, I'm 21, and I'm from Bedfordshire. Representing the young men in the house. And then the younger men in the house. Where's that little boy gone? Oh, OK. OK, I'll bring it. No, 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 get your dirty hands away. I'm, I'm going to take it to him. He's young. How, how old is that boy? Eight years old. You see? But he Do wants to taste our ravioli. Yes. OK, well, no pressure, boys. Um, we're going to feed you, and you're going to eat in front of a 1,000 people. Um, hope you don't mind. Um, we, got we need a drum roll, or like a... A drum roll? Yes, well, when, it's, when it's a thousand degrees temperature. So first of all, let's just give it up for the Kiapa sisters. Look how beautiful. Look how beautiful that looks, come on. A little close up, cut to the plate, cut to the plate. That's it. Nice. And another one, look, there's another one. Look at that, woo. It spins like the price is right. <laughs> you two wouldn't remember the price is right because you're so young. Um, I'm going to have a sage quest. Anyway, where's, is there another? Let's take a spoon for the little boy. OK, I'm going to take this over to the little boy. Um, now, um, girls, if you can grab the mic on that hob. And these boys, you can see they've never used a knife and fork before. Well, he has. This one, he hasn't got a bloody clue what's going on. <laughs> can, can you just eat and then explain what you taste in your mouth, boys? Explain the Try taste and be in expressive. Mouth, you tried one, yeah. Oh, God, he's still trying. Have you <laughs> tried one? Yeah. Where's Are, they really lovely good? Are they good? Are yeah. you going to try cooking them yourself? Okay. No, but my mum will. <laughs> <laughs> I found him! Look, I found him! Hey! Right, I'm going to give this to your mummy. What do you think? Feel free to... It's nice you and can crispy eat it in the middle. However you like. Crispy, crispy in the middle? Crispy. Use your fingers. Um, and the sage, try, you should have a little bit of that sage, even though it's really bizarre to eat a leaf of sage when it's got crispy... Yeah. I'm going to have this one. What do you think? Mm. Yeah? yeah oh, lost for words. Anything yes. else? That's no, really good. Yeah? Very well done. They're not nice. letting go of those plates, guys, but we are yeah. going to make up. We're going to carry on making more. Feel free. Yeah? Feel free. For anyone well, else? Look, boys, feel free to sit at the side. Uh, you know, make yourself at home, and then when you finish, just leave the plates and you do whatever you like. Um, guys, a big round of applause for the Kiappers. <laughs>